they call it the final frontier, the last great unknown of the world. In a time when we always try to learn more, space remains largely undiscovered, beckoning for us to go out and satisfy our curiosity. So, now why are we even trying to shut down a program that can explain so many things to us? NASA, or the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, was founded in 1958, sent the first men on, on the moon in 1969, which gave a huge morale uplift for the Americans right in the midst of the Vietnam War. Numerous inventions that have benefited the quality of our lives greatly were all because of the result of space. And yet the affirmative side believes that NASA should lose almost all of its funding. The plan that the affirmative side has laid out is impractical, illogical, and undesirable. And further explains why my partner Iris and I believe that it should not be resolved that the United States federal government should significantly decrease its funding to NASA. The affirmative has laid out a potential plan I propose to get rid of all of NASA's funding except for except for our potential weather climates or other, or other machines that are essential to our life. Yet many products that help our lives have all come from space, and getting rid of this program would destroy any more hopes of developing technology that could benefit our lives. Without these satellites that came as a result of NASA's ex exploration, the GPS, satellite TV, smoke detectors, and various other products that help the quality of our lives would never have existed, according to NASA's official governmental website. Right now, NASA is currently studying how we can utilize space to limit greenhouse gases, as well as trying to solve the Big Bang. Of course, there can be the argument that all these breakthroughs won't occur anymore, and that we should just scrap NASA and cut all our losses. But as Iris stated earlier, that type of mentality was also present in the 1960s, when the communist nations were manhandling the United States space programs. Led by Sputnik, Russia enveloped our nation in fear that they were going to develop futuristic technology that the U.S. couldn't counter with. Desperate for a spark against a war on t communism, President Lyndon Johnson allowed Neil Armstrong to become the first man to walk on the moon. This event boosted American morale and as that became a symbol to America in the war against communism. With the continuation of NASA, possible products such as the flying car or any other futuristic product could be a result of NASA. And yet we'll never know if the affirmative plan gets, if the affirmative plan gets through. Never know whether our lives could have been benefited even greater. Now of course, the affirmative, affirmative plan points out another big issue, money. They believe that the money, the 75% of NASA's budget, which equates to approximately $12.75 million spent on NASA, can be used more effectively for other government projects. But where would it go? Every single government project is currently under heavy controversy, such as the economy, the health care bill, and the energy bill. Yet NASA has repeatedly shown that, sh that their funding doesn't go to corporate bonuses, but to actual research. In fact, according to the ozone processing team of the Goddard Space Flight Center, government-funded research by NASA led to a way to regulate the process of the ozone layer and subsequently try to mitigate the disappearance of it. Also, according to Wayne State University, NASA discovered CAT and ultrasound scans, dialysis treatment for kidney patients, the heart defilibrator, and much more. There is no controversy that these discoveries have helped mankind, and while it does cost a lot of money, wherever the money goes, controversy and arguments will trail right behind it. So why don't we spend it on a proven source of scientific advancement, technological discoveries, and programs that will benefit all of society, not just the rich or poor. Along with that, getting rid of NASA would hurt the United States financial system as well. According to Charles Homan from the Washington Monthly, in an article provided by SIRS, NASA currently employs 17,900 workers. Also, referring to the evidence stated by IRS earlier, an additional 8,000 contractors for NASA could be lost if the space program lost significant funding, as written by Matt Sedensky of the Associated Press. All those lost jobs and affected families and friends certainly makes it in, make it impractical, as well as undesirable to them. The affirmative also argued that they, would, that they could pa partially privatize NASA, yet this could lead only to more troublesome problems. One of the main problems with NASA is that NASA can't generate enough money on its own to sustain itself. That's why taxpayers have to pay a decent amount of the program, which led to this controversy. But if they plan to privatize it with a company, exactly how does that company expect to make enough profit to sustain itself while still developing its space sciences and exploration? In fact, according to TimeHuman.com, Virgin Galactic, arguably the most successful private space company right now, has lost money for the past two years. An astronomical amount is needed to support NASA, which any company, which any, uh, company can't consistently sustain. But the company will most likely go bankrupt, which subsequently will bring down that nation's national economy due to mass employment, as stated earlier by IRS. The intangible parts of space, the R of it, is mystifying. 
It cannot be explained, yet it captivates us. Thank you.